When you first log into Covidence, you'll be brought to your review dashboard. This is where you'll find a list of all of your reviews that you've ever created or worked on. You can sort by newest, oldest, or title if you want to see them in a different order. If you hover over review, an archive button will appear. This, if you click this button, it will be moved to your archived reviews. It won't be deleted, but it will just be moved to this back page here. Since we're sort by, sorted by newest, our newest review is at the bottom. So I'm going to click on the title to go to that review. On the review summary page, you see a box for each step of the review process. As you work on your review, this will fill up with information and tasks to complete. We also have on the top right navigation menu, the settings button, the Prisma button, and the export button. So Prisma, it says zero right now because we haven't done any work on this review, but these numbers will update as we move through each stage of the review. And the settings button, this is where every important setting that you can think of is located. When you made your review, it actually brought you to the add remove reviewer settings right away. This is where you can add more people to your team by clicking invite another reviewer or remove them by clicking remove reviewer. But there are some other settings here that will be important. This is where you can change the name of your review if you want to do that. You can also completely delete it. This isn't like archiving where it will still exist. This will delete it completely. You can set the date of your last search, store your search strategy. You can also store a review citation if you're updating an older review. And you can change the number of reviewers required to for an article to pass the uh, abstract and title screening stage, so one or two reviewers or for the full text review stage, which is one or two reviewers. Under team settings, you can keep track of your project's progress, what, how much everyone has done. And you can also set rules so that certain people on your team can only do certain things. And that's for each stage. So this is for the title and abstract screening stage. There are different team progress data and rules to be managed for the full text screening and extraction stages as well. You can also store your inclusion and exclusion criteria right here in Covidence. If you input those criteria here, this can be accessed from the screening stages. So as you're making decisions on articles, you can pull up the, easily pull up the criteria and remind yourself what it is as you're making your decision. And the last tab under settings is study tags. We will get into this a bit more later, but basically this will help you sort uh, all of the studies that you're going to import. If you want to leave the review summary page and get back to your list of reviews, you just have to hit the Covidence icon right here. And then you might notice this little circle dot next to that is gray right now, but if I click on it, I can see um, any op updates that Covidence has sent, if there's a new one, it'll actually be colored red and you'll click on it and no or you'll know that there is something new to look at from the people at, at Covidence. If you click on your name, you have the option to visit your profile. This is where you can change your email, uh, update the details of your account. You can also get back to your reviews through this link here other than rather than the Covidence icon here. You can switch to the demo review. Uh, we will do that a little bit later to work with some more of the features. And then the other important button is the question mark. This brings you to the knowledge base. And the knowledge base is basically the manual for Covidence. This is where you'll find articles about how to do just about everything. Uh, you can search for an answer to your question by typing in a keyword and it will pull up relevant articles. If by some chance you can't find your answer in the knowledge base, couple of options. You can, of course, contact the librarians at IHP, and we would be happy to try to answer your question. Or you can email the people at Covenants directly. They are very responsive and just quite lovely to deal with. So uh, don't, don't be afraid to get in touch with them if you need to. So that was just a brief tour of the Covenants interface. We will get into each part of each feature of Covenants in more detail uh, throughout the rest of the workshop.